Last night was a night that I thought I'd have been sitting down to get into it. Like, let's go. This is a rub-your-hands-together game for me. It was only game five of the season. But honestly, like, I, I was excited. The Giants are playing the Dodgers. It is a new season. It is a fresh start. It is a new roster. And I sat down and it it, it it failed to it failed to spark anything and it looked exactly the same. Um it's a baseball game. We're five games in. I know this whole thing's gonna evolve. Um and it's no surprise that the Dodgers are fantastic. And sure, they're probably gonna finish ahead of the Giants in the standings. Like I wasn't I wasn't under some sort of a uh, you, you know, an idea that 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 this was just going to look completely different, but I'm not going to lie. I found last night to be very, very disappointing. Why? Multiple reasons. It felt the same. It felt totally overmatched. It felt like the wrong people were in position at the wrong time. It, it and and maybe more so. It didn't feel. Like everybody gathered around to go, sweet Giants versus Dodgers, let's go. Like, where was that? Mm, I don't know where the oomph was. I, I, I just, it wasn't there. It, and, and if that's your debut, like in theory, that's supposed to be the big reveal. That's supposed to be the excitement. The curtain rises on Giants, Dodgers, this brand new roster. And they went out, and it looked exactly the same as it has the last couple of years, which is the Dodgers just bleed you for about five or six innings, and then they get a big hit because they always get the big hit. And then you look up in the seventh or eighth inning, and they've got a six or seven, an eight or a nine on the board, if you're lucky, because sometimes it's a 14. And um, you whimper into the night, and pitchers you've never heard of are on the mound. All right, that's a good answer. I I I'll say this. The Dodgers are really good. Back to you. No, but but it it, it, it goes deeper than that. Well, we already knew that. It goes it goes deeper than that. And and in my experience, you can't you can't as a new player understand the significance of the Dodgers Giants rivalry until you experience it for yourself. Like I was lucky enough to grow up with it. Yeah. So when the first time I did it, I was like, oh, "Let's go, baby," but. Matt Chapman has no idea about Dodgers Giants. Nick Ahmed has no idea about Dodgers. They know, but they don't know until you do it. And I feel like when 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 it comes back north, and the Dodgers are in your ballpark, and you see the enthusiasm of Giants fans or the hatred they have, if they're there, because the Dodger fans have been pretty prevalent the last couple of years, and you 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 when I experienced it at Candlestick the first time, I was like, oh damn, this is what I thought it would be. In LA, it's just they're, they're, it's the fifth game. It was the fifth game of the year to Nick Ahmed and Matt Chapman and Jorge Soler and any other new guy, Jung Hu Lee. It was the fifth game of the year. You have to grow into that Dodger rivalry thing. The other thing is, and these aren't excuses, this is fact. The other thing is, with Paxton last night, and we talked about in the handoff thingy, is he's effectively wild. He's throwing one over the backstop and then paints away. When guys are sprayers, we call those guys sprayers. When they're sprayers, it's hard to execute your game plan. When you get to the highest level, you watch video, you face a guy before, you you have a game plan, I'm sitting on a pitch, and you don't ideally swing until you get that pitch. But when a guy's a sprayer, you could go three at-bats and never get the pitch you're sitting on, so your game plan's kind of out the window. You have like a, a night where you're maybe swinging at things you shouldn't be swinging at. He walked six guys last night, didn't know where it was going, but then he'd paint 95 on the black middle in and throw a nasty 3-2 hammer. And he struck out, I forget how many, he struck out a lot of guys. So these aren't excuses. I felt what you felt last night. I didn't feel as a fan watching on TV that it felt like Dodgers-Giants. It just right. didn't. There's something missing. Well, what know, I think it is is all those things I'm saying. It's it's maybe Bob Melvin figuring out his bullpen right now. It's maybe Bob Melvin figuring out the rhythm of his lineup after five games right now. It's so damn early that any big league manager that would come on this air right now, it takes them a month to 40 games to figure out Okay, this is my life. Oh, dude, like, like I, I'm i not freaking out. It, and, and by no stretch did I expect, oh, I expect the Giants and Dodgers to be on even footing or not. You know what? In just listening to you talk, what sort of resonated with me, you know what just popped into my head? 
You know what was disconcerting last night? I think Giants fans sat down and they know the Dodger roster better than their own. Yeah. That's disconcerting. Well, the Giants you, fans probably know the rivalry better than half the guys that were on the field last no night. No doubt. No so doubt. That's why maybe but we it, were more fired up for that. I was fired up. I couldn't wait. Yep. I got a couch. Let's go. Giants, Dodgers. Let's it's a good measuring stick. I don't care how early in the season it is. It's always a good measuring stick. It's always a good time to make a statement, even if it is game five of the year. Not gonna overreact. They they come out win ten to nothing tonight. I don't know. But damn it, if Betts and Otani well, and they're Freeman fantastic. and yeah, Will Smith like I, is hitting 500, I it's know. just like, what are we no, doing? That's a really damn good They're an good absurd team. lineup. And then they and then they set the table and, and, and Teoscar Hernandez gets a hold of one and you're done. And the ball game's over. I'm glad Logan Webb is throwing tonight somebody who understands the whole thing. But that's kind of what I'm getting at. And I'm not mad at it because I'm glad the Giants have new players. But we are still being introduced to this, and it felt weird it to sit down and you're like, I know the Dodger lineup, and then you know the Giants get into the bullpen, and you're just like, this is part of the problem with the way the Giants have built this thing. And part of me says, okay, you finally had a good offseason and fixed it. And then the other part of me goes, yeah, but Matt Chapman and Blake Snell might be off of the team next year too. And, yeah, don't and, worry about that. Well, and I'm not worried about it, but like, put it this way: Does Jung Hoo Lee feel different than some of the other additions? Maybe it's because he's playing well, or maybe it's because you know that's your guy. That's gonna be your guy for a while. That guy got a contract. Chapman wants to play for Melvin. He's going nowhere. Okay, great. Well, if they pay him, they're gonna have to pay him. I mean, we'll see the kind of year that he has. Maybe I mean, get, there was a bad base running mistake by um, Soler last night, down dude, by four. You got to go station to station. You got to know those things as a big leaguer. There's nowhere to go there. We just need base runners. But you don't, you're already down by four. You're probably going to lose that game. Yeah, but you had first and second. I and, know. And, and, and you swing and you're down by one there with one swing. Or you, or he grounds out and you're still down by four. Yeah, I, but that I, like, can't happen. I, that I'm doesn't not, matter because we'll not, never know because of that base I'm running mistake. I'm not disagreeing with you. It was a horrific base running mistake, and I don't even know if it was his. Like, they're. The broadcast, I thought, was not great in explaining what had happened. We couldn't even see who was rounding third. And I, and I think that and I think it was Lamont Wade. I think he stopped. I think he went around third and stopped. So Soler was running towards third, and then he stopped. And then Wade took off again and went home, and they threw behind Soler, and he was standing there. So I don't even know how much to, to, to what level it was his fault. He would have made third if he had kept running. But doesn't matter if there's a runner standing on third. You got to stop. So whatever it was, is a terrible mistake. I'm not disagreeing with you, but the Giants have built them, themselves in a way where, like, dude, I mean, it's still it's still difficult to uh, to sit down and watch a game and know what you're what you're going to get. And 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 it, even if you're a big fan, and you're like, I know all about Keaton Wynn. I got it. And you get to the sixth inning and you're like, what's happening? All right, well, okay. There's the, the, the career minor leaguer making his debut against the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium. That's that's a tough place and he, and, and, to and, debut. And he's following up Miller, who's also brand new. And that's fine. Like, I got nothing against new players, but that's a weird feeling. When you sit down, you're like, I totally get who's coming up next for the Dodgers. As a Giants fan, and you're like, wait a minute, who's <laughs> who's playing right field for us tonight? You you know what made me the most <clears throat> mad last night? Excuse me, there's a cough button here. Probably use it. You know what made me the the most mad last night is um, everybody's uniforms. What was that did mean? you did you see Joe Kelly's pants? They were like floods, and then Avila's pants. They were like floods, and there was a pitcher for the Dodgers at the end. I think it was Brazier. No, is is the second pitcher Brazier that you could see through his pants, and you could see his shirt tucked into his pants. You could see like. Well, the, that's the, the shirt. The fanatics. These thing. uniforms are terrible. They don't fit the guys. Like the half the half half of the big leagues in, is feeling cool in your uniform because you have a tailor in the in the clubhouse that tailors your uniform like a suit. That's half these the guys, big leagues. I, I don't know. I just was searching for something to say and I couldn't figure out what it'd say on live radio. The, the the a really cool part of the big leagues is you can look badass in your uni and you can feel sexy in your uni and these new unis are see-through you can see their shirts underneath there's nothing the pants don't go down far enough and they look like bell-bottom floods that's not a look and this is the uniforms are terrible 
Somebody's got to do. It's the big leagues, and they look like they're wearing minor league uniforms. I don't know why. When this became a thing a few weeks ago, I don't know why it didn't become a bigger thing. It just went away. Everybody was outraged, and then nothing happened. Right? They're still wearing the same thing. They're see-through pants. Yeah, I didn't notice. I really didn't. I mean, the Giants are wearing gray, so that's okay. It's when you're wearing white that it's a problem, right? Yeah, when okay. you're wearing white, it's a problem. And the Giants' home uniforms aren't really white. They're kind of cream. You can still see through them. You can't. Yeah, and they don't fit. Like, your uniform's got to fit perfect.